Every time a central bank comes out and puts out a statement, they have to craft their words very carefully. There are always clues in what they're saying. And today I'm going to dig into the RBA's latest statement to see where the clues are and what they're going to do in 2024. Now, rates were on hold this month, as expected. We enter into a new regime where we've got a new governor. They're going to be talking in different ways. There's press conferences. There's changes on the table. And this statement was the first of those changes. So it's a little bit different to what we've been accustomed to. But I've been reading these things for 15 years now, and I kind of know where to look, uh, and I kind of know what to ignore. A central bank needs to be very careful because they have their credibility online. A central bank needs to be balanced in that the market is looking for clues, the market is looking for guidance, yet they're no better at forecasting what will happen tomorrow uh, or in a year or in 10 years than most of the analysts in the market or even you or I. So they need to be careful around their wording. And what happens is they construct these statements in really complex ways, but they leave clues, they leave breadcrumbs. For me, there are two things in this RBA statement. First is the introduction of a new word, which is sustainably. Now, what does this word actually mean? It means that the Reserve Bank um, is encouraged by the fact that inflation is starting to come down. Um, They're starting to see the Australian economy weaken. But this word here, sustainably, has been put in because what they're saying is we get it, we see what's happening, but we need to see more of it. And sustainably to me doesn't mean 12 months, doesn't mean six months, to me, sustainably means three or four months. Now, that is my interpretation. I might be right, I might be wrong, but I'm going to show you why I think it's three or four months and not six to 12 months. I'm going to look overseas and show you more clues as to what's happening to inflation overseas. And because we're in this global world, because we're interconnected, we can't shy away from the trends overseas that are about six to nine months ahead of us. So that's very, very important. You're going to continue to see sustainably inputted in there. And I think what this does is it's an admission by the RBA that inflation is slowing down. They're saying, yeah, yeah, okay, we get it. Inflation is slowing down. Unemployment's rising but we need to see it sustainably. We need to see a trend established. I think the trend is established. I think the central bank is late to the game. And as as I've said in my previous videos, if you go have a look at my two previous videos, um, I've said that the RBA really pushed the limit in November and now they're paying the price. So that's the first thing in this statement. The second thing, um, you know, I've been out on social media. uh, I put out a TikTok earlier Uh, this week when the statement first came out and I called it the big RBA bluff and like every good poker player will tell you you have to be careful when you bluff uh, because you could get caught out and when you're exposed in poker uh, when you try to bluff your hand against a player that has strong hands what ends up happening you end up losing your hand Uh, and you can end up losing big So I've basically said that the RBA uh, has come out in this statement right at the end um, and put out a big bluff. Um, Basically what they've said uh, is that they are willing to continue to increase rates if they need to. And to me, that's a big bluff. Uh, The RBA is not in a position to increase rates. Inflation slowing. Inflation is now at 3.4% trim mean, which is the RBA's own measure. Uh, that's where CPI is. Target range is 2 to 3%. Okay, sustainably, but you're not in a position 
uh, to put up rates after you've increased rates so much over the past two years. Uh, and so this bluff that, you know, we will put up rates if we need to, of course, you'll put up rates if you need to, but you don't need to. That's the bluff. The bluff is that they don't need to. And they are putting this statement out um, because they basically want to say to the market, we're in control and we didn't stuff up in November. And that interest rate increase that we put through was justified and we'll do it again if we need to. That's a big bluff and that's going to be caught out by the market because as I'm going to show you now, inflation is already starting to trend lower. Uh, inflation is going to establish into uh, a trend lower sustainably and interest rate rises are not happening this year. Of course, if something out of the blue comes up, yeah, but that's always the case. You know, that's the case in every single meeting. That's the case in every single scenario that they're prepared to increase or prepared to cut. But words need to be very, very carefully chosen because if they're going to come out and say, we'll increase if we need to, and then in a few months, they start to walk away from that um, and they start to open the door to cuts, which is what I believe will happen, they're going to lose credibility and people will stop reading these statements and people will you know, continue to mistrust the RBA in the same way that trust has been eroded back during the pandemic when they said, we're not going to increase until 2024 credibility is on the line and it's important for central banks to keep that. That's the bluff. Let's move on to inflation because that's what matters. If you're an investor, if you're a stock market investor, if you're a property investor, you want to know where rates are going. And I'm going to show you why I think this sustainably business um, is going to eventuate quicker than expected. So one of the really cool businesses out there, um, it's a new business, um, it's a technology business, um, you know, fintech's brought around some pretty, pretty cool businesses. It's not just trading apps or cryptocurrency uh, or payments, but information and the data that we rely on is important. And Trueflation has a great indicator. Uh, they basically put out a, a feed, let's call it a feed, of what they say is the true inflation reading. A lot of the inflation that's public. Uh, published by government has a lag in it. And true inflation are basically saying we're an on-chain business. We've got access to live data. We have feeds, you know, coming into us and we're able to gauge more freshly where inflation is today, not where it was, uh, but where it is today and where it's going in the future. And true inflation have actually been calling this right. They've actually been ahead of the curve. I've been watching it um, since they started publishing around this time last year. And at the beginning, it was um, a little bit, there was a bit of a gap, you know, they were missing the numbers. But as the numbers started to come out, we continued to see that the inflation data was tracking true inflation's data. And as you can see in the United States, this is where true inflation um, is showing inflation is at, the true inflation. Now, US government rate 3.4%, oddly enough, that's exactly where the trim mean was for the past month in Australia, which is the RBA's preferred method, 3.4%. Uh, so Australia and the US, 3.4%. But have a look at what true inflation is showing in US inflation and how that continues to dip. Now, we are not the, the uh, US uh, in Australia. We're a different market. But what happens there and the movement in inflation trickles through into the global economy of which Australia is a player. So I'm starting to see this trend in the US. I'm starting to see the categories, and they're very similar to the categories. Basically, goods inflation. Um, when we talk about inflation, we're talking about the inflation rate. Okay, we're not talking about the price of things coming down, but the rate at which they're going up is slowing. So goods inflation rates is starting to slow in the US, in the UK, in Australia. Services is sticky. And the RBA has been talking about these services and saying, you know, services inflation is sticky. But services inflation is driven by interest rates. Housing is more expensive. Why? Because mortgage rates have gone up. And when mortgage rates go up and you're not building enough houses, rents go up. So a lot of this services inflation business 
is going to start moderating as central banks start to cut rates, right? And we're seeing it. We're seeing it in the numbers. And Trueflation is a great guide. I encourage you guys, if you're interested in this stuff, if you want to know where rates are going, where inflation is going, jump onto True Inflation. Um, I've got no vested interest in it. I don't pay for it. I don't subscribe to it. I'm not involved in it at all it's a great guide that i use and if they do go paid i probably will use it depending on how much they charge uh, so it's a really really cool uh, gauge into inflation and when the rba is talking about sustainably and we need to see well guess what i'm having a look at stuff like this that's already you know a few months out and it's showing that inflation has really really dipped the last point i want to make is this about australia we're exposed to China. We are exposed to the commodities cycle. I'm a big believer in China. I think Australia is one of the best places to be investing in at the moment. But the Chinese economy is weak. The Chinese economy is showing vulnerability. Now, whether that's planned, whether that's not planned, whether there's stimulus around the corner, I think the slowdown in China or the less than expected strength in recovery, let's call it. China's not booming as much as it should have coming out of the pandemic. That is going to start having an impact on Australia. And that is a further dampener on inflation. That puts inflation pressure down for Australia. So not only do we have inflation falling in the US and the UK and the impact of rising rates flowing through the global economy, but we're also seeing China a bit slower than expected. And for these reasons, I believe Australia is at a tricky point. Rates have been pushed too hard on the Australian economy. I think they'll hold. And I still think, despite what the RBA said this week, their bluff's going to be caught out. Rates are going to start being cut towards the end of 2024 unless we see something drastically different in China or there is a inflation shock somewhere in the world. Until next week, make sure you share this with someone that you think might find it useful. Subscribe uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and let me know what you think either here or on social media. I'm on different platforms. Let me know what you're thinking and happy investing until next week.